Assalamu alaikum. In the last lecture, we talked about Gordon diagram for simple transfer functions, that is the first order transfer function. In today's lecture, we shall talk about uh, Gordon diagram for a quadratic factor. Its transfer function, uh, second order system, is given by this expression. So, its frequency response, g of j omega, is obtained by substituting s equal to j omega into the transfer function, that is. So by substituting s equal to j omega, we have uh, this expression which can be equivalently rewritten into this form. That is by taking omega n square common from the numerator term as well as from the denominator term. So we have, so by taking omega n square common from the numerator and denominator, this transfer function, this uh, function can be rewritten over here like this one. That is omega n square divided by omega n square is 1. So this divided by omega n uh, square which is this uh, 1 power of omega square over here is cancelled with this one. So we have this expression. Magnitude of this uh, complex number that is equal to magnitude of uh, 1 over magnitude of this complex number. j square is equal to minus 1. So magnitude of this complex number is equal to square of the real part which is 1 minus omega square over omega n square whole square this is the real part plus 2 zeta omega over omega n whole square whole square root this is the magnitude of this complex number which uh, when written in dBs it becomes 20 log of this expression so 20 log of this thing and is equal to 20 log of this whole expression so I just write it over here 20 log of uh, this thing that is uh, the magnitude of this complex number and we know that uh, log of 1 or something is equal to minus log of that thing so that is minus 20 so again uh, we split the whole frequency range into two regions that is smaller frequencies and larger frequencies for frequency omega much much less than omega n we can see that this number is uh, much smaller and therefore it can be ignored uh, this number omega square or omega n square this is also smaller and this can be ignored so we have minus 20 log of uh, square root of 1 which is the same as uh, minus 20 log of 1 is a proxy this is equal to 0 degrees so at low frequencies the magnitude uh, of this complex number is 0 degrees at high frequencies that is at uh, omega much larger than omega n uh, so here this term will be much larger than 1 so it, this 1 can be ignored so square of minus is uh, plus uh, furthermore here we have omega square and here we have omega power 4 omega is a much larger number so this, this thing is even much larger than this one so we can even ignore this thing so this magnitude is approximately equal to minus 20 log of omega power 4 uh, whole omega power square root now uh, square root is cancelled out with the, the second power so we are left with uh, minus 20 log of omega square over omega n square uh, and this is equal to minus 40 log of omega over omega n which is the same as minus 40 log of omega uh, plus uh, 40 log of omega n so if we uh, draw this magnitude plot so we have uh, this plot over here uh, this axis you remember is the logarithmic uh, axis so at low frequencies when omega is much less than omega n uh, this uh, is uh, this frequency omega n is called kernel frequencies for frequency smaller than omega n 
the magnitude is 0 degrees and then uh, the magnitude plot it drops with a slope of minus 40 degrees per decade so here is 10 omega n so here in one dB the magnitude will drop in one decade magnitude will drop by 40 degrees so minus 40 dBs per decade is the slope of this line. For the case of first order factor, asymptotic magnitude plot was quite accurate. However, for a quarter defector, it is less accurate. If you have a, a more accurate plot, depending upon the value of this zeta, you will observe uh, some peak in the magnitude plot. So for the case of quadratic factors, depending upon the value of zeta in the magnitude plot, you may observe a peak and uh, this peak smaller is the value of zeta larger will be peak over here so we can even uh, this uh, this graph which we sketched earlier that is the asymptotic plot we can uh, make a uh, few corrections in it by determining this peak in the graph so how we can determine the frequency at which this peak appears and the magnitude of that peak so how we can determine that? So here is the magnitude for uh, this, uh, f here is the function which describes this magnitude plot. So when would be this magnitude maximum? This will be max, this maximum can be determined by taking the derivative of this expression with respect to omega. Uh, however, taking the derivative of this expression with respect to omega, that is a little bit complex. Uh, what we observe is that this will be maximum when this denominator is minimum. So instead of taking the derivative of this expression with respect to omega, we take the derivative of this denominator term with respect to omega to determine the minimum value of this thing. Uh, even we can omit this square root because if this thing inside the square root is minimum, then its square root will also be minimum. So we need to take the derivative of this expression with respect to omega. So we take its uh, derivative with respect to omega and substitute it equal to zero to determine the minimum of uh, this expression which will be maximum of this expression. By taking the derivative of this expression with respect to omega uh, and after simplifications you reach at this expression. So uh, from here we get uh, omega equal to zero is one thing or here you can see that slope of this curve is also zero at omega equal to zero which is uh, uh, cannot be shown on this uh, logarithmic scale this frequency cannot be shown over here and the second frequency second root of this uh, equation that is so the second uh, root of this equation is at this frequency this frequency is called the resonant frequency omega r so omega r this frequency at which this peak appears uh, is given by this expression and how to determine this peak value this peak value denoted by m r can be obtained by substituting this resonant frequency over here into this expression so uh, you can verify that this uh, comes out to be equal to 1 over so you can see that smaller is zeta larger will be this peak uh, uh, that is uh, if uh, for example zeta is equal to 0 mr that will be equal to infinity uh, zeta equal to 0 so 1 over 0 that is infinity this peak will be equal to infinity for other values of zeta this peak and uh, the corresponding resonant frequency can also be determined. So the border diagram of quadratic factor can be easily sketched at low frequencies. It is 0 dB. Higher frequencies, it is a drop with uh, minus 40 dB per decade. And we can make a correction in this asymptotic plot by determining the peak and the frequency corresponding to that peak. Uh, what about the phase plot? So for phase plot, what we see is 
at uh, low frequencies we can just omit this term we can omit this term and we have 1 over 1 which is 1 so phase angle of 1 is 0 degrees so at low frequencies we have a phase angle of 0 degrees at uh, high frequencies this term uh, this term is much larger so we can ignore this term even we can ignore this term so we have this term so this is uh, j square is minus 1 phase angle of minus 1 is 180 degrees or minus 180 degrees so at high frequencies the phase angle is minus 180 degrees so what we do is in the asymptotic plot we start one decade uh, before the cardinal frequency that is from point 0.1 into omega n and uh, move till uh, one decade after the cardinal frequency and join the, these two points by straight line so this is asymptotic phase plot for a quadratic factor which is fairly accurate uh, if you start one decade before the Carnot frequency and end one decade after the Carnot frequency next we talk about body diagram for transfer functions which are a little bit more complex 